One of the most common questions in the world of Wi-Fi is, why is my Wi-Fi so slow? This video series is for anyone who runs a Wi-Fi network, whether at home or in the office, to really help troubleshoot this question to its fullest extent. This is part three of the video series. Be sure to watch part one and part two from the MetaGeek YouTube channel, in which we discuss downloading the Insider software and grabbing a compatible Wi-Fi adapter, both of which you will need for this video. I'll be sure to include a link to download Insider in the description below. I want to talk about the capabilities of Wi-Fi devices. Simply put, not all Wi-Fi devices are created equal. If you have sufficient coverage throughout your home or office and the Wi-Fi still seems slow, it might be a good idea to investigate the client and router capabilities. And fortunately, Insider can help with this. Open Insider with a compatible Wi-Fi adapter plugged in and find your wireless network's name or SSID and dive into the network details by clicking the binoculars icon. Keep an eye on the clients column and see how many clients are on each radio on your network. Find the radio with your problematic client and click the binoculars icon again. The next step is to find the problematic client from the clients list and click on the binoculars icon to view the client details. On the left hand side, you will now see the capabilities of this device. If you don't see anything there, turn the Wi-Fi off and on again on that device so Insider can catch what we call an association request. Check the max MCS index and the number of spatial streams that your client is capable of using. What do you see? The higher the MCS index number and spatial streams, the better the speed and throughput. Here you can see my iPhone 7 is capable of using two spatial streams and a max MCS index of nine. If you go to mcsindex.com, you can find that the maximum data rate that this iPhone can achieve on this network is 866.7 megabits per second. Sure enough, this is also the current connected rate, meaning this iPhone is as fast as it can be on my network. Even though my internet service provider is providing 940 megabits per second in my data plan, this iPhone 7 will only reach 866.7 megabits per second on this network. And that's in a perfect environment. In reality, I'd be lucky to get 500 to 600 megabits per second on a speed test with this iPhone. Inversely, some Wi-Fi devices are bottlenecked by ISP backend speeds. For example, my MacBook Pro with three spatial streams and an MCS index of nine is capable of achieving 1300 megabits per second on my network. But if I run a speed test via speedtest.net, it's only going to reach 940 megabits per second simply because that's what my ISP data plan is capped at. Therefore, when troubleshooting Wi-Fi, it's important to know not only what your Wi-Fi devices are capable of, but also the ISP backend speed that you're working with. Chances are one is going to be bottlenecked by the other. That's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe to MetaGeek's channel for more videos and content. You can find out more at metageek.com.